What's good, KRL Squad? KJ Wine and Red Leo back again with another video, man. This one right here, I tried to do this video before, and I don't know, the programming just wouldn't work. I don't know what it is with this camera and my computer. It's just not wanting to be compatible with each other, but I'm going to try this again. So, if you're new to the channel, man, please subscribe, man. Leave a like on the video. If you're a returning subscriber, what's up? How y'all doing? How y'all day ills? Anyway, I got Madam CJ Walker for y'all. A little bit of history, or black history, which is world history, American history. It's history. But without further ado, Madam CJ Walker was born in Delta, Louisiana former slaves. She later moved to Indianapolis, Indiana. In 1910, she started her own business out of her kitchen, not only to improve the quality of black women, but also their way of life. After moving to Naptown, she soon, she, uh, tongue twister, she soon started a salon. Here she educated black women on her methods of hair care. In, in 1915, Walker began, to ha began having presentations at churches in the city. And I'm not going to hold you on her doing this all around the state of Indiana or even the Midwest. Uh, she has a, there is a little uh, series, a four-part series on Netflix if y'all are interested. Uh, where it kind of goes into a little bit more detail than I'm going to give y'all because I just have just a short summarization of it all and it goes into a whole lot more detail. Warning, watch watching this with your cheering because it is rated M more or less for language but you know there are some scenes in it which I didn't think would pop up I just thought it was rated M because of the time that it was in, so I figured it'd be for language. You gotta watch them. Uh, you gotta watch those little rating things on TV, man. You gotta watch it on Netflix. You gotta watch it on TV. Watch that because they really pushing just debauchery on TV, y'all. Hey, I'm just saying. So. She did these presentations in churches because back then the church especially in the black community, that was social media. Showcasing her product, spreading the word, you know what I mean? Showing people how to use her product, getting the name out, man. Back then, you know, it was a whole lot face-to-face. -face. I, I can't stand talking on the phone right now and trying to pay bills. This was a time when blacks were looked down upon, discriminated against, and more importantly, there was no direction on their hair care, mostly black women. She did her best to improve said women, women's purpose and to give them a sense of self-worth in a country that deemed them worthless. Now, Madam Walker did have her fair share of critics, y'all. Some of the people going far as saying she was trying to straighten black women's hair, saying that she was trying to whiten black women because of her products. And she never put hair straightener on her products. Now, you know, in a sense, it was, but can you blame her? It wasn't. It was more of a way to maintain the hair or have it from being unruly. I mean, this is a different time, uh, far from the natural hair movement we got going on right now, far, far from that, a far cry from that, actually. So it was just different. And people needed a sense of pride and trying to move up in life, get better jobs and all that, and, you know, they still kind of look down upon, you know, black hair today. Look, I, I got locks. A lot of times I'll go someplace anymore, I'm the only person in there with locks. It is what it is, but, you know, just be proud of who you is, man. But different time and back on topic. You're talking about a time when these sisters didn't even have time to take care of their own hair because of their workload. In a time of segregation, in a time of segregation, oppression, and lynching, 
Walker looked to improve black people's lives, giving them jobs in their community. She didn't just hire women, she hired men too in her factories where she, you know, produced her product, carrying boxes, delivering, you know, said products all over the country. In 1915, she became known as the first black millionaires. I still don't even know if that's a word, but that's what I found in my research. <laughs> and black America's first philanthropist in a time where blacks were only making about $12 a week. You can almost can't even buy you a, a meal at McDonald's for that. I mean... But even at Burger King, I mean, a Whopper meal is about $8 or something. I mean, come on. Some of these restaurants you go to, $12 ain't even going to get you a meal if you want to step up past a fast food restaurant. It's at least, if we went to Applebee's last night, it's at least $15, I mean, just for just a regular old meal. She believed that women were too dependent on men because black women only work domestic jobs so I mean a lot of them didn't even learn how to drive matter of fact my great-grandmother God bless her soul she didn't know how to drive I got a, a aunt too she didn't know how to drive me and her actually got our license around the same time actually after she moved back from New York so she made it her own squad of herself with an army of agents selling her products door to door, 50,000 women shared the Walker dream. And that's what they call it, though, if that's what she called it. Now, kind of in conclusion here, uh, she had 23 products in her line. That was including face powder, a skin brightener, soap, hair color, glossine, and she even had pa uh, men's pomade. Not Dapper Dan, not Fop. For all you old brother out there, fans out there. <laughs> I live in Kentucky, George Clooney. Home, George Clooney's hometown is probably 20 minutes away from me. So, another little fact check there. So, uh, if, you, if you made it to this part in the video, man, please give it a, a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you ain't subscribed already. And in the comment section, man, give me a squad for the KRL squad, man. KRL squad, man, y'all the best squad, man. Continue rocking with your boy. And remember, man, don't let nobody tell you who you is, man, for black history, for American history, for world history. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to stay on this making a few videos I kind of slipped up a little last week y'all can see I ain't got my usual setup I'm in my bedroom again it's cold outside my garage ain't heated up <laughs> and I'm not gonna be out there Harlem shaking trying to get y'all a video out you know so man thanks for rocking with your boy man once again leave the video thumbs up throw them up man Shouts out to all the new subscribers. Shouts out to all the old subscribers. Y'all know who y'all is, man. Make sure y'all follow me on social media. If I don't get it editing, that, that's what I'm doing. If I don't get this in the editing, that's what I'm trying to do right here, right now. So, if that don't happen right, I'm going to put this video out anyway. Because uh, it's for y'all. As much as it's for me. Y'all, stay blessed, man. Keep God in your life. Stay prayed up. This has been your man. It's Cajun Wine and Red Leo, man.